Open your Bible to Acts chapter 19 and just, just kind of maybe put a put a finger right there and then turn to Ephesians chapter 3. And uh, the, the songs, <clears throat> I couldn't have chose anything that would be better to go with the message today if I'd have tried. Um, where I want to head with this is uh, to know the love of Christ. And, you know, the, the world we live in, you think it just can't get any crazier. And, but you know, this is not the first time in history that the world's been a mess. And Paul is, this is a prayer of Paul for the saints. And when I say saints, these are, these are people that have, have trusted Christ as Savior of their sins and, and trusted Christ in salvation. And this is Paul's prayer for these saints at Ephesus. He's writing to this church at Ephesus, an, an assembly, um, assembled much like we are today. And I'm going to read his prayer to begin with in Ephesians chapter 3. And I'm going to begin in verse 14. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. He says, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which hath us knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And just a little background. Talking about Ephesus, it was not an easy place to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Uh, the Apostle Paul spent a great time at Ephesus, about three years. And uh, if you still have your, your finger in Acts chapter 20, um, Acts chapter 20, verse 17 um, Verse 17, it says, from Miletus, a place way down on southern Turkey today, uh, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. So we see Paul going to Ephesus. We skip all the way down to 30, verse 31. Uh, Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So for, for some three years, a, a very... I think longer than he spent anywhere. Paul was at Ephesus. He taught in the school of one named Tyrannus. The word was preached. Lives were changed. Uh, new churches were established. And understand that Ephesus was a hub of activity in the ancient world. And uh, interestingly, uh, you know, this church that was is at Ephesus that Paul wrote this very letter to, they're named in the book of Revelation among those seven churches of Asia, um, Ephesus along with Pergamos and Thyatira and Philadelphia and Sardis and Laodicea. And there was an abundance of churches in this particular area. Why? I, I believe uh, Paul was there for three years. I mean, they trained the disciples. They raised up people. Um, even... Uh, Beyond these seven churches of Asia, right in that area is Colossae. Um, there's the church at Hierapolis. And, uh, you know, if you go to that, the book of Revelation and you see the, the letter to the seven churches of Asia, you come to Laodicea and they were condemned for being neither hot nor cold. And, um, you know, we can visit these sites even today. I know people take this journey and they're, they're looking for a church, you know, with a steeple and a bell. Or, and, uh, you know, you're not going to find it, but, but you can go to the place. And, you know, that 
Christ told that church at Laodicea, you're neither hot nor cold. And, and you can stand there at Laodicea and you can look up where, where Hierapolis was. And uh, Hierapolis is mentioned in, in later on in Colossae. But you can see that um, at Hierapolis, is, the world knows it now as Pamukkale, a word for cotton. And the hot water, there's hot water pools. And it, it just comes out of the, the ground. And it leaves all this calcification. It kind of looks like cotton clouds coming off the mountain. And uh, from Laodicea, you look there at, at Pamukkale, which is where that church of Hierapolis was. And then if you look to the south, you see Colossae. And it's way high in the mountain, the cold snow melt water. And, and there's an imagery, you know, church of Laodicea, you're not hot and you're not cold. And uh, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And and uh, so, so much happened here in this region. Um, but it was it was not a, an easy place to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Um, it was at Ephesus that a great crowd of people assembled in the theater for two hours. For two hours, they cried out, Great is the honor of the Ephesians. Um, some versions of the Bible, and I might say great is the goddess uh, Artemis. And it's it's the same God. The Greeks had a name. The Romans had another. And um, But Diana wasn't just a false goddess. Diana was, and everything associated with, with worshiping Diana, it brought a lot of profit um, to those that people formed idols out of silver. There were the silversmiths, um, shrines of worship. And understand it wasn't so easy to serve the Lord in a place like Ephesus. And uh, interestingly, Paul wrote this letter while he was actually imprisoned at Rome. And I believe we can find comfort in the words of Paul as he was inspired to write here to this church at Ephesus. And uh, he was on his knees in prison in Rome, and he was praying for those believers, for the saints at Ephesus. And I'm going to go back to our text in Ephesians chapter 3. And uh, I'll back up one verse. Verse 13, he says, Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. You know, in prison, from prison in Rome, Paul said, Don't worry about me. You know, we can say, maybe in our modern language, you know, Jesus has my back. He knows where I am. He says, church at Ephesus, don't worry about me. And in verse 14, he says, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And I don't know, just, I don't know how much to elaborate here. Um, on my knees under the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, we, Brother Jeff really drilled this home this morning in, in, the, in the lesson this morning about that relationship. And um, as I read this, I thought about that model prayer. And, I, and probably we could all recite it. You know, when I was a child in grade school, my mother sent me to the Lutheran church. And, and we had to memorize these things by rote. You know, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know it, don't you? I don't have to say it. You know it. And you know, when I was in Romania for all those years, I, I prepared a message on that model prayer. And wow, it resonated. Because those people, whether they knew it or not, it was just, it was there. It was planted there. It was planted there. But you know, Jesus, he said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. We talked about this morning, the Bulgarian service, you know, I and the Father are one, words of Jesus. Um, John 14 and 9, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And I guess the point I want to make, for God to be your Father, Jesus must be your Savior. For God to be your Father, Jesus must be your Savior. And if Jesus is not your Savior, really nothing else I'm going to read matters. It really doesn't matter. Um, we all need that. We all need to be saved. We all need that eternal life that comes through Jesus Christ. Um, 
So, so he prays. In verse 16, understand that Paul left Ephesus for Jerusalem in tears. And now he's imprisoned in Rome, and he's praying for these people. And he, and he says in verse 16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the interim that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. And I ask you today, what does God own? What belongs to God? I think everything. Everything. Uh, it all belongs to him. And that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. I mean, the one that owns it all. He owns absolutely all of it. You know, as he wrote to Philippians, he says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. I mean, that's there's assurance there. And I'm not preaching a, 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 a gospel of prosperity, but the Bible makes it clear that God takes care of those that belong to him. And if, if you lived in a place like Ephesus and you're a believer, you could be knocked out of the job market. I mean, it was that way here. It was that way here. I mean, I I spent a few years going to Sandansky, and we had a, a group down there, and uh, Vladislav shared with me that when he was young, his mother took him to church, and on the way out of church, his, one of his school teachers was there and, and said, I wouldn't recommend doing this again. Uh, it, it was not going to be good for his mm -hmm. education, his grades, his future job prospects, I mean, that's just how it was. And, and in a place like Ephesus, no different. Uh, but there is, is comfort in knowing um, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory. The psalmist said, Psalm 37, 25, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I, I'm not really expecting riches on this earth. But God is, Christ has gone to prepare a place for me. And God takes care of those that belong to him. We can find that peace when the world has no peace. You know, I, my heart breaks for these businesses that have been shut down. I mean, this guy next door, is he? Um, we talked about it, you know, before service. You know, some of these businesses just may never recover. As a child of God, as a believer, we can count on it. He has a promise it's an easy life. But he says, he'll take care of those that belong to him. You don't have to live a life of fear. And he goes on, he says, he says to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. And what's this all about? You know, when, when we are saved, when we come to Christ in repentance and faith, the Holy Spirit indwells us. We receive an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And he says, strengthened by the spirit, the inner man, the part of us where God lives and works, there is, there is strength. Yeah. There is strength there. And Paul continues in, in verse 17, he says that, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. He talks about that you may be able to comprehend. We're going to get there. And, uh, but I just want to kind of break this down a little bit. He says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And that word dwell is like, Feel at home. Laura, when you went home, was did it still did it feel like home? Was there something special there? Um, maybe your mom made something that you know, something that you missed. Home is home, mm -hmm. should be home. Um, Christ wants to feel at home in your heart. You know, Sherry and I lived in Romania for 12 years, and it was not uncommon in Romania to be invited into somebody's home. But you typically didn't see the whole home. You, you would be brought in through the entrance, and there would be a sitting room, some common area that, that was always kept impeccably clean, and that's what you saw, and that's as far as we would go. And... Um, 
I'm afraid maybe we're guilty of, you know, as people would host us as guests in their home, okay, I'm going to show you this one room, but that's all you're going to see. And we can be guilty with Christ. I mean, the sad part is he he already he knows what's in every room of our heart. Right. He knows. You know, <clears throat> there's nothing hidden from God. And uh, I mean, he knows it all. And we need to surrender all. Um, why not invite him into the problem areas of our life for help in those areas that are, you know, help us clean house. You know, yesterday, Sherry wasn't feeling so good. I'm just, I'm just bragging on myself, okay? I mean, I I vacuumed, and I mopped the floors, and I mean, I, I went to work, clean house. And uh, it just makes it a cozier, nicer home. And Christ wants to feel at home in your heart. And why is he there? Because he loves you, uh, that he may dwell in your hearts. And... Uh, there's another word here that you being rooted and grounded in love. And you know, this rooted is an agricultural term. Any, any farmers here? Uh, maybe you planted a garden. Maybe you planted a little plant and put it in your windowsill sometime. Um, plants have roots, okay? And that's where they obtain their nourishment. And uh, he says, be rooted and grounded in love love and you know the wind that blows reveals the strength of the roots mm -hmm. the wind that blows reveals the strength of the roots some of these trees that are so tall they have deep roots um, years ago Sherry and I bought a, a place in the country and it had an artesian well I mean the water just came bubbling out of the ground and we had these fish ponds, and, and the ground was so fertile, you could grow about anything. And one year, I planted a, a huge garden, and we were going to be gone for three weeks. And so I got this idea. I'll, I'll hook up an electric pump on a timer, and I, I drew water out of one of our fish ponds. And every day at a certain time, that whole garden got watered, and we left. We were gone for three weeks. And I came back, and that corn, the corn was just, it was, it looked so good. And I says, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. And that corn kept growing, and it it developed ears, and it was, I was just, man, I, I thought we were going to have the best crop of corn. And then the wind blew, and, and that stuff was laying flat on the ground. And uh, sadly, that that corn, those roots did not go deep. It was all right on the surface. Uh, it was all on the surface. And that first big wind that blew, it was down. And uh, the, the wind that blows reveals the strength of the roots. And uh, if you live on this earth very long at all, you're going to find out that uh, life isn't always nice. Uh, where do you draw your strength, from self or from God? And, uh, you know, sometimes... Seemingly everything fails, there's no hope, but, but Christ is there. He is there. And um, you've probably read in Corinthians that Paul talked about a, a thorn in the flesh. You know, he had, I don't know exactly what it was. I, I suspect maybe it was eyesight. Um, he said, I besought the Lord three times that, that I, you know, could be rid of this thorn in the flesh, some kind of a physical anomaly, uh, something that, that bothered him. And Paul, and uh, the Lord answered Paul and says, my grace is sufficient for thee. And uh, I won't go into details. I had a, a seasonal life that was particularly difficult and I, I consulted it good friend who his his three-year-old son was killed in a church parking lot um, devastating and this man his name was Donnie Bice and said brother Donnie how do you cope what do you do and he says you know people would tell me that 
All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. He says, don't tell me that. He says, don't tell me that. But he says, where I got my comfort is my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. And I don't, I don't mean to in any way belittle Romans 8, 28. Not in any way. But there are those seasons of life that mm-hmm. my grace is sufficient. And God's grace is sufficient for salvation. It's sufficient to sustain us, to carry us through in even the toughest of times. And the world has gone bad. I think we can agree. I mean, it is craziness. And just when I think it, it can't get any worse, I, I make the mistake of looking at the news. And uh, what can I say? Praise God. His grace is sufficient. Our lives must be rooted in Jesus Christ. Where do we draw our strength? And uh, so in that prayer, he said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Settle down and feel at home. That you may be rooted. That, you know, draw from deep. uh, From God and be grounded. Grounded in love. And I just want to take a minute and talk about that word grounded. uh, And that actually a, an architectural term and we can look all around us and we see examples of architecture and every builder knows if you're going to build high you must go deep you know you, you go to Pisa Italy and what do you see you see the leaning tower of Pisa and uh, that thing started to lean before it was ever finished because they built it on ground that, that wasn't settled and those engineers, they, they tried to they tried to kind of curve it back up, kind of like make a banana out of it, and that just made it worse. And finally, they pumped concrete under it, and I don't know what all they did. And, but <laughs> the problem is, the thing is not built on solid ground. Yeah. And uh, but <clears throat> excuse me. That old song, On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And, you know, our life for Christ is based more on more than feelings, on just, you know, fuzzy stuff. You know, let's hold hands and sing kumbaya. I mean, it's got to go deeper than that. It's got to go deeper. It's based on the word of God. Um, Christianity, as we've said often, it's not a a religion. It's a relationship. And and how do we find out about that, that one you love? More about Jesus. What did I know? Did we sing that today? I think. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> to be grounded in love is to is to go deep down in that bedrock. Find out about that one that loved us so much that you know he left the glory of heaven and came to this earth, knowing his destiny would be the cross. And uh, I know when I pursued a when I pursued. A relationship with Sherry. I was I was in college, and uh, besides my studies, I, I I worked a job. I worked at a television station. I did live news. But somehow through all that, I, I found time to spend with Sherry. I mean, I would I lived in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'd get on my motorcycle, and and if I had like two hours, I think I can go see Sherry. You know, thirty out thirty minutes across town to where they live. And, Maybe to spend 30 minutes and then zoom, zoom back to work or back to school. But you'll make time. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, God doesn't make us love him. So you think if he did, what kind of love would that be? Um, but grounded. Paul continued in prayer. Okay, they dwell in your hearts by faith, rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Um, wrap your entire being around Jesus Christ that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints, the believers, what is the breadth, length, depth, and height. I mean, that, that pretty well sizes it up. Will we, will we comprehend it? I, I don't know that we ever will. Um, he says to know the love of Christ. And this is where I wanted to get which passes, passes all knowledge that ye might be filled 
with the fullness of God. Verse 20, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. <clears throat> think about that power. When we know Christ, you know, his spirit indwells our hearts. And according to the power that worketh in us. And, and think about that power, according to the power that created the universe and all things in six days. Think about that. According to the power that, that parted the Red Sea so that Moses could lead Israel across on dry land. According to the power that, you know, that shut the mouths of the lions in the days of Daniel. According to the power that that broke up the prison walls. Remember Paul and Silas singing hymns in that prison in Philippi and the, the walls shook and they were released according to that power, according to the power that, that raised Lazarus from the dead. According to the power that defeated death in the grave, Jesus risen, we serve a risen Savior. Unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And think about that. I mean, I I heard it illustrated one time in reference to uh, getting on an airplane. You know, there's a verse in Philippians chapter 4. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Think about, Laura, you just made the flight, so it's fresh in your mind. And, you know, you, you get on that plane, and those engines kind of wind up a little bit. And you're anticipating it's just going to build up speed, go down the runway, and take off. Because that's what the plane was made to do. That's what that's what Airbus or Boeing or whoever made the They made that plane to fly, didn't they? But think if that pilot was thinking, well, We'll just, I, and I don't know how you'd get here from the UK, Kevin, to tell me that, but, um, you know, let's find that, that autostrada, that magistrala, that interstate highway, um, you know, try to navigate the way on ground in a, in a machine that's made to fly. And I think that's sometimes how we are in our service to God. You know, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. You know, you just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I believe that. But think about that power, that resurrection power that raised Christ from the dead. And he's coming back. Above all that we ask of him, according to the power that worketh in us. In these times, the world's gone mad. I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow, let alone next week. I mean, the world, the, the news is changing. But you know what? If we know Christ, that power works in us. And unto him be glory. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. All ages. That's that's the time we're living right now. That was the time those, those, those people at Ephesus were living in. And that's the time that we're living in right now until the Lord comes back. We can have confidence. We can have peace. We can, if Christ is dwelling it, dwelling in our hearts by faith, be rooted and grounded in love. That means spending time with the Lord in prayer and meditation in His Word. And uh, you know, the world can go go mad. The world can go. Crazy, but God's too good for that. We can find peace in this world. Amen. Um, let's have a prayer and then uh, Jeff and Grace will lead us in another song. Now let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time you brought us together. And we just thank you for the Lord. Thank you for Jesus. That we have peace because we have the Prince of Peace. Dwelling our, our lives. Lord, may we may our lives exhibit a calmness and an assurance that Lord, this world really isn't our final home. We're just 
the old song says, we're passing through. You have so much more for us. Let's go with us as we leave this place and go out this week. Lord, may we maybe just walk with you and seek you and just go deeper with you, Lord. May that relationship just, just get better and better each, each passing hour, each passing day. Go with us. I just pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.